Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be tying together all the modules of our browser engine with a binary so that we can actually run it and open it up in a window. Before we actually create our binary though, let's look at the types of HTML and CSS that we can actually parse with this browser engine. So here's a piece of basic HTML. We have our HTML tags, opening and closing. Then we have a head with a link inside of it. This links to a style sheet that we have yet to create. It'll be called example1.css and it'll be in the same form folder of this piece of HTML. Then we have our body tag and inside of it we have our divs as well as a P. Each one of them is named by a color and then it says box and that's because we want them all to have specific sizes and stuff. Okay so here is our CSS for our example one HTML. We have an HTML selector. This is displaying our entire HTML page as a block. Then we have a head selector. Remember we can't style user style sheets because they're not built into our browser. So our head element will actually display display things inside of it unless we tell it not to. We're putting in display none which will make it so that it displays nothing. Then for our body we want it to be a block and we're going to give it a margin of six pixels. And then each of our divs will also be a block. The various different classes that we have here we have blue, we have orange, black, green, red, orange, red, and bronze. All of them have their specific colors attached to them. Blue is using the blue keyword. Orange is using the orange keyword. Black is using the black keyword. Our green is using a green hexadecimal. We have a pale violet red, and we could use a hexadecimal if we wanted to for red. So here's a red code. Then we have an orange red. Then we have an orange red word. And then we have a bronze color that we're using a hexadecimal to get. And if we give this some translucency, this is not actually going to show up properly. So we need it to be of alpha one. Then all of our box classes give our elements a display of inline block, and we give it a margin right of one pixel, margin bottom left and top of one pixel. We give them a height of 300 pixels and a width of 20. We have seven elements here, so I'm going to give each of them a width of 12. That way they should checker across the entire screen from one side to the other. And let's decrease the height a little bit, so I'm, I'll make this 100 pixels instead of 300 pixels. Okay, so now we have one example, and we'll make another one after we create our binary. So this is the type of HTML and CSS that our browser engine can parse. If we were to put text inside of any of these divs or these p tags, we're not going to even see that text show up because the browser engine doesn't know how to render text properly. Though if we do put it in here, it will be parsed. So I'm going to put a little bit of text in here. I'm just going to say this is a blue box and you'll see what happens when it actually parses this text. So to create a binary, we want to jump into our cargo.toml and we want to create a bin attribute. And this uses two square brackets instead of just one like dependencies and package. Then we put in the name of our binary, which will be main.rs, and then the path to our binary, which will be bin backslash main.rs. We'll make that bin folder and our main.rs file and then we'll jump into this and start coding. Now there are various ways you could put in your paths like this. This should work for both Windows and Linux as well as Mac OS, but if you do get an error and it's not finding the binary properly, then make sure to try some of the different ways. For instance, putting double dots and a backslash could help. Putting the root of the project could help. Inside of our main.rs file, we first want to bring in our external crate browser engine, which is our browser engine. And we're going to use the browser engine, we're going to use the command module, the CSS module, the CSS parser, the DOM, the HTML parse, our layout, our render, and our style. So basically every single one of our modules. Then we want to bring in standard environment, standard FS file, standard IO buff reader, and standard IO read. All of these libraries are necessary so that we can read our HTML and CSS properly and convert them into a string and then push them into our CSS parser and HTML parser. So we'll create our main function just as a stand-in for now. But first we want to create a get HTML function. This will output a vector of our DOM node, and it will be the function that we use to grab our HTML file and convert it into a string, and then a DOM node, and then pass it back to our main function. First, we want to create a path. So we use environment current dir, and we unwrap this, and then we say path push, and we put in the example that we want. In this case, we want example example1.html. Then we want to match on file open. 
So this is for error handling when we open the file. If we get OK, then we want to put our file into a new buff reader and then the bind this to file reader. Otherwise, if we get an error, then we want to panic and we want to print out the file that panicked and then the error that actually errored out. So we put in path.display, this will give us the file name, and then we put e, which will give us the error. Next, we need a new mutable string. This needs to be empty, so we'll just create one called HTML input with string new. This needs to be mutable because we're going to read all of our HTML into it. Then from our file reader, we're going to read two strings. So this will take the file, convert all the contents into a string, specifically put it inside of HTML input, and then we want to unwrap it. Finally, we want to say let nodes equal HTML parse so we're calling our html parse directly then we're calling html parser new which is our entry point into our html parser we're passing in the string for html input as a reference and then we're calling parse nodes so that it will actually traverse the string and grab all of the information from it and finally we just want to return nodes which will be our vector of dom node the next function that we want to create is called get css this is going to be very similar to our get html except rather than in returning a vector of dom node we're just going to return a CSS style sheet. So again, we want to get the path and then we want to push in our example, example one. In this case, we want to push in CSS instead of HTML. And then like before, we're going to match on file open with our path. And again, if we get an error, then we want to throw back the error. But if we get the actual CSS, then we want to put it into our buffer. We'll create a new mutable string called CSS input. And this will be an empty string like up top. And then we'll call our file reader and we'll read to string. So we'll read our CSS as a string and we'll put it into CSS input. Then finally, we want to create a variable called style sheet. And this will call on our CSS parser, CSS parser new with CSS input in it. And then we want to call parse style sheet, which will parse the actual style sheet for us and take out all the information that we need. And then we'll return style sheet because that's what we want. So now let's jump into the main function and hook all of this up. First, we want to call our get HTML function and bind this to a variable called nodes. This will give a vector of DOM node. Then we want to iterate through our DOM nodes and we want to call our DOM pretty print with N and zero, zero being the indent size, so that we can print out the DOM nodes as we iterate through them. Next, we want to get a reference to our root node. Remember, this is a vector of nodes, and the root node itself will be organized so that it will be the zero index of our vector. So we'll just bind this as a reference to our root node. Next, we want to get our style sheet. So we'll call our get CSS function. This will give us our style sheet, and we'll bind it to style sheet. We want to print out our style sheet. So we're just going to call a println function. We'll put our style sheet in with a debug flag so that we can actually see what we're parsing. We want to get our style node from our style tree. So we'll call style style node new and we'll pass in our root node, which if you remember is our root of our DOM node and then our style sheet. And the new function takes in a node, it takes in a style sheet as well. And that's why we're calling these two. We need to pass them as references so that they stay in the scope. And then we'll call style pretty print on our style tree root variable so we can print out our style tree properly. And again, our indent size to start will be zero. We then want to make a viewport variable and this will define the size size of the actual HTML that we're rendering. So we already have the size of the actual window that we want to create, but we need to specify that we want the HTML to match that window size as well. So we create a mutable viewport and then we use our layout dimensions default to give us a default set of variables. And then we can set our viewport content width to 1024 and our viewport content height to 768. Then we want to get our layout tree called layout layout tree. And then we pass in our style tree root and then our viewport and then we can pretty print our layout tree as well and again we have an indent size of zero finally we want to create our command list display commands equals command build display commands and we'll pass in our layout tree this will give us a vector of display commands and then we can call render render loop and pass our display commands inside and this is actually it for our binary now if we run this all of this should work properly so we'll just call cargo run and after everything compiles you'll see a bunch of text text inside of your console and you'll see your browser window. So we have here a blue box, a yellow box, a black box, a green box, a red box, a bronze box, and an orange box. And if we look through our console here, 
So these elements are all coming from our layout that we're pretty printing. This here is all from our style tree. So you can see here we have our HTML and it has our actual style built into it. So it's saying HTML, display block, and then for head we're saying display none. Then our body is display block margin six pixel and you get the point. So it's a mixture of our HTML and our CSS all put together. And then above it we have our CSS. So this is the actual file as it was read in. And then above that we have our HTML. And you can see that the text was read in but it wasn't rendered to the screen so there's no text inside of this blue box if we want to though we can jump back into here and actually mess around with some of our elements so maybe we can make the height 600 now and maybe make all their margins five pixels and see what happens so you can see the difference here. I accidentally dragged up the window. We've got our boxes here pushed up against the top. Now they have spaces between them and they're actually quite a bit elongated. Now, unlike a normal browser, every single time we change our CSS and HTML, we do need to re-render it. And that's because our rendering loop doesn't auto render and our HTML is just pulled in from a file. Also, if we resize the window, you can see that it doesn't dynamically shift things around. And that's because we don't have responsive elements inside of this browser engine either. We can give them a different width. Let's say we give it a width of 30%. Let's see how it actually lays things out for us. And if I decrease their height significantly, we'll see this a little bit better. So let's make this 40 pixels instead of 600. And now you can see all of the boxes. So we have our first three at the top. Then we have our next three because they can't fit in this area here. And then we have our last one because it can't fit in this area. If you remember, we put all these colors into our CSS parser. Let's make a piece of CSS and HTML that will actually render out every single one of these colors. So here's our CSS. We've got our box class again, and we've got quite a few different colors in here. In fact, I believe it's 153 different colors. This will have a border color of black on each of the elements, and we're messing around with the padding too. So we've got negative five padding, and our border will be on our left and right of each of our elements. Our HTML will just be a series of divs, each one with the color name and then box. We could take one of these boxes and put it in the head and see if it actually renders it. And in fact, I'm going to do that with black. So I'm going to put black up here and we'll see what happens with that. So now we want to point our binary towards example two CSS and example two HTML. All we do is just come in here and change this to example two and example two and then save it. So our black box was actually removed entirely, which I didn't expect. But you can see here that all the other boxes are being rendered out and they each have a black border on the left and the right. We can come into the CSS and mess with a bit of this stuff. For instance, we could make the heights higher. We could make the width higher. We could give them more of a margin. We could give them more of a padding. So maybe we want padding on the bottom and maybe we want a border on the top as well. And I'll jump back in here and I'll take this div out of the head and I'll put it into our body again. Now you see we were on it now we have a border on the top but not on the bottom and everything is now rendering properly we have our black box in here as well and these fit the screen quite well which is really nice if we go through our terminal you'll see that we have quite a big amount of layout and that's because we have 150 or so different elements and in fact my command line won't let me go up further enough to actually see the style tree and stuff all right guys so before i go i just wanted to touch on something if any of you are following along and you're trying to build this yourselves, you're going to run into a problem, especially if you're on Windows. And the error will come from a library called Rust FreeType. So I'm just going to go quickly over how you can fix that if you're on Windows. If you're on Linux or Mac, you just install the libraries and you'll be all right. Okay, so if you want to get the free type, you want to go to this link and I'll leave this in the description box. This is the GitHub for free type dash sys and for PC Windows GNU you just can install it using mysys2. If you're on PC Windows MSVC then you want to get the pre-built libraries so you go to this GitHub and you can download the entire GitHub if you want or you can just get the architecture that you need. You take the files in this architecture and you just want to put them into the folders that contain your Rust libraries for the particular tool chain that you're working with. So the DDLs will go inside of your include folder and then your lib files will go inside of your lib folder and this will make it run properly and you shouldn't have any errors anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this series of tutorials i think i'll probably have one or two more rust videos before i close out the rust tutorial series for now then i'll go on to a few go elm and elixir videos before we move on to the next language if you enjoyed this tutorial feel free to subscribe and like if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it. Have a good night.